What's up my dudes, Valk here. Today I'm going to be talking to you about DPS Fushuan because in my video I made about Fushuan, about her ability to heal your team, the amount of comments I got saying that I'm completely underestimating her damage, da da da, I'm not going to like, I'm not going to dispute it because I didn't do the math on her damage before I made that video. I did it now, we're going to be talking about that, so we're going to see exactly how much damage she can do, but the amount of comments I got about it, I was kind of surprised. For me, my value in Fushuan is the fact that she's a... And she's an abundance, she's a harmony, and she's a tank all in one. She's a preservation, everything. She's all three roles condensed into one character. That to me is extremely valuable, but a lot of you guys want to run her as damage, so we're going to do the math and figure out exactly what you can expect. And that's what we're going to be doing today. I'm going to be letting the I'm going to be letting the relics run in the background, but I'm going to go ahead and pull up my notepad while this runs, and we're going to go over everything so you guys can see all the math I did, where I get my numbers from, etc., and what you can expect. All right, here we go. You know I gotta leave this stuff going on in the background. It's like jangling keys for shiny ADHD kids like myself. So DPS Fushuan, her base HP is eight or 1475, light cone texture of memories. The uh, there's not really a good DPS like preservation light cone for her. So the best one we can do is just give her the harder shop light cone. Uh, it's 1058 HP. The relic set we're going to be used is four piece longevity disciple. The HP set. Uh, we're going to go crit. We're going to go crit damage specifically, and you'll see why in a bit, but crit damage is all you need. Speed, not optional due to later MOC. I did one math with HP boots, so calm, calm down before you get commenting. With HP and boots, she do... There's another one with HP boots. We'll get into in a second. Uh, but there's a reason why I consider speed basically a tax at this point, and I'll explain that in a second too. And then Quantum Planar Sphere HP Roots. So about speed boots, if you do not care about MLC, ignore speed boots. However, Fushuan has 100 base speed. The Forgotten Shadows of MSA, MOC 10 have, I believe, 170 base speed. Have 170 speed boots. I guess I was tired when I wrote that. Uh, but they have like 170 base speed. It's not so much a preference as it is a tax if you don't want them lapping you. Plain and simple. They hit very hard. They CC a lot. Uh, you don't want them to go a lot and they go very fast. The only way you can counteract that is by going fast yourself. So, plan our set. Inert Solsado. I looked around, a Rudolent Arena buffs her basic. So, Rudolent Arena, I saw some people saying it buffs basic and skills. Skill doesn't do any damage. Most of her damage is going to be coming through for her ultimate. So, I'm like, let's full send the ultimate with Inert Solsado. So, you can get Inert Solsado, if you don't know, adds 15% more damage to the ultimate. So, we have that. It also gives 8% crit rate, I believe. Yeah, 8% crit rate. And then we get 139 HP from the flat piece from the relic. Uh, the rope is 43.2% HP. Same with the boots whenever we do HP boots. Keep that in mind. So 1094. Quantum damage 13.8%. Chest crit damage. Keep in, like I said, we're solely running chest uh, crit damage because I'll explain in a second. Uh, you get 65% crit damage from that. 50% base. The skill gives 12% crit rate. Planar set gives 8% crit rate, base gives 5% crit rate, trace is 18.7, relic set 16%. Traces from H or HP from traces is 506 because it's 20%. HP from the two piece relic set is 303.96 because it's 12%. So totals, but first we gotta go and do this. What do we get? Um HP ah, that's that's not that good. Uh that's not that good either. Okay, let's try again. So totals, not counting substats, so it could be substantially higher. Keep in mind, this isn't counting substats, this isn't counting enemy defenses, resistances, buffs, whatever. This is just her. So base HP is 2533. Total HP with everything added in is 4437. Total crit damage 114.8. Total crit rate 59.7. Keep in mind, this is what I meant by you only want a crit damage chest because she has enough crit rate at base. Not counting substats, she's at 59.7% crit rate. Very, very good. Not counting enemy defense, assuming she crits. Normal scaling is 50% of her max HP, so she's it's 2219 is the HP number we're running off of because it's 50%. You're looking at 6615 per normal on crit. Her ult scaling 100% of max HP, 4437. It's 15.22 or 15,211 per target, meaning multiple targets that could go up. Uh, because this is without substats, because it's not counting enemy defense, I could see this hitting for anywhere from 20k to about like 24k realistically. Uh, that's pretty decent numbers in my opinion. I don't think it's terrible, but I don't think it's anything crazy either. Now with HP boots, uh, you're looking at 5531 HP. Everything else is the same. Normal goes up to 8245. 
and then the ultimate goes to 18,965 per target. I believe with everything with good substats with good builds, you could probably get somewhere around 25 to 30k per target on hit. That one there is a pretty good number, but once again, not running HP boots is pretty sleep is pretty scary. I was reading sleepy below that, but it's pretty scary. It, it, not running HP boots is scary to me because I do believe that you could very easily get abused in MOC later MOC stages. If you don't care about MOC, then by all means, full send of damage. Keep in mind, I'm not telling you how to build your character. I'm not. I'm just showing you guys how this works, showing you guys the math. You decide for yourself. It's your account. I don't know what you want to do. I don't know if you want to run through MOC. I don't know if you even care about MOC. Maybe you want her to hit the biggest number possible and you, that's what you're looking for. Go for it. By all means, you do you, boo-boo. But I'm just presenting the information that I have at hand to you guys and letting you guys decide for yourselves. So... The reason as to why I'm sleeping on damage potential in its entirety. Yes, you can make her work as a DPS. I fully believe that she does good damage. In fact, great damage for a preservation unit. These are decent numbers. However, she's also able to consolidate three rolls. Why would I want somebody who can bring three rolls together, tank, healer, and buffer, to deal damage when she enables to the extreme a hyper carry strategy through her traces and crew a buffing? Basically, because she is able to condense three rolls into one. She's your abundance. She's your tank. She's your harmony. You can also slot in two other Harmony characters and full send a Hyper Carry strategy to the moon. And I mean like absolute max Hyper Carry to where you can enable one character no matter who it is to absolutely pop the hell off to the utmost degree. And that is that to me is pretty exciting. I can't wait to see what some people do with that setup. But you can run her as damage, but with that HP boots, it's pretty rough, and with HP boots, you will absolutely have a very frustrating experience with later MOC floors. The enemies there get very fast, like I've explained. So, basically, without the HP boots, the damage is okay at best. With HP boots, the damage is pretty good, but then you're going to be struggling with speed, and speed's a big issue. But like I said, if you plan on running her with Bronya and just giga boosting her with Bronya, or you plan on running her with Asta, Asta's a good fix to it too then it's not really an issue at all speed does speeds a null factor or if you just don't care about moc then speed's also a null factor like you don't care about speed then uh but whenever you get into harder content in the game speed's absolutely a giant factor and what you need to factor in and as far as your team building and stuff to go because a lot of my decisions based around the hardest content in the game which is like moc 10 it's why i turned kafka into a support i know a lot of people are like but kafka can zero turn with bronya and all this stuff blah 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 but I believe Kafka, as far as like a functioning unit, is better off in a support. And But this is like months down the line. Like I have a lot of head thinking on that. But in the end, this is, this is what I'm trying to get at. Is that I think she's going to basically be better in the long run. Rather than slotting her into a damage spot where she does good in. Why would I not want her to be this massive role consolidator? consolidator role condenser that basically takes three roles combines them into one character and be a unit that i'm going to plug into every single team for the foreseeable future because she and en en like enables and opens up so many things that i can do with the rest of the team basically what i'm getting at so yes i did the math dps fushuan absolutely does work you can make it work i think it's pretty decent uh, with speed boots i think it's great without speed boots decent with speed boots um but i think she's just better off being built into that kind of functioning support slot right where she does abundance tank and harmony all in one go anyways that's the video let me know what you guys think in the comment section below are you guys gonna run her dps you guys gonna build her crit now that i've got her gonna build her support or build her dps but now that i've gotten fushuan out of the way now i'm going to focus on giga dan until fushuan's ready to actually come out i'm only making this because so many of you guys were saying that i'm sleeping on her damage so i wanted to math it out and see exactly what i could expect from her anyways thank you guys for watching i'll catch you guys in the next one peace